In this video we're going to try and fix the jumping and flying problem that we have with the crocodile. Just to remind you, if we test the game, you'll see that the crocodile flies if you carry on pressing the up button over and over again. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that when you jump you only get to jump once. And if you're going to land on something like the floor or the platform, that should really be the only time that you're allowed to jump and you shouldn't be allowed to fly because really that's cheating. So let's go back to the game. And what we have here is from the previous video, you'll realize that we split up our left and right and our up movements into two different events. That was to make sure that our character could move left and jump at the same time or move right and jump at the same time. And something we forgot to do in the last video was to remove the last part of the code from the left and right. So I'm just going to throw that away. Although it didn't make any difference in the last video, what we're going to do in this video is going to be affected by having something like that in the left and right one. So we needed to delete it now. We need to talk about now attributes, which any other programming language or software would call variables. We'll need a, a, an attribute or a variable in this game to make sure we know when the crocodile is touching the floor or when he's in the air. Now, a variable is kind of a difficult thing to think about, um, but a simple example of a variable would be in a game where you have three lives, uh, a variable would be something that would store how many lives you had, and every time you died, the variable would be told to take one of the lives off. And the same thing with collecting coins in games like Super Mario Brothers. A variable would remember how many coins you'd have at that time to make sure that you got your extra life when you got to 100 coins. So in this case, we just want to make a really simple variable that basically measures when the crocodile is touching the floor. So let's create an attribute. We're going to call it touch floor. And where it says type, we are going to make it a Boolean. Now, a Boolean is really easy to understand. A Boolean attribute or a boolean variable is something that is either yes or no, true or false. So it can either be one thing or another thing. So there's our touch floor attribute sitting there. And this is in a section called getters. And we have a section called setters. Really easy to understand. At any time, we can tell touch floor to be true or false if we use a setter. Anytime we want to know whether touch floor is true or false, we get a getter. Much easier if I show you an example. So the first thing we need to do is add an event, which is a collision. Now a collision obviously is when two things hit each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this member of group. And what I'm going to do is say when actor self, and self is obviously the crocodile because that's what I'm in. So when the crocodile hits an actor or an object of the group, and now I need to choose a group. And in this case, we're going to choose the tiles because obviously the floor was made out of a tile set. So that's in the group tiles. So this is what's going to happen. Whenever the crocodile hits anything that belongs to the tiles group, what we want to do is we want to set touch floor to true. So anytime the crocodile is touching a member of the tiles group, set touch floor to true. So that will always make sure we know when the crocodile is touching the floor. Now, when we go to our up event and we want the crocodile to jump, we have to check for a couple of things. Not only do we want to check if the up button is being pressed. So let me just remove this for a second because we need to actually fix this. So what we want to do is put in an and. So whenever somebody presses the up button, we want Stencil to check two things now. We want to check, is the up button being pressed? And then, while the up button is being pressed, we need to know if touch floor is true or false. If it's true, the crocodile is touching the floor and you're allowed to jump. If, on the other hand, touch floor is not true, that means the crocodile is not touching the floor in which case we're not allowed to jump. So let's go through that again. If the up button is pressed or down and touch floor, let's go to attributes, 
grab a getter. And if touch floor equals Boolean comparison true, let's put that in there. And let's throw that whole block into its slot there. So let's read that again. Always, if the up button is being pressed and at that very time the touch floor attribute is true, then set the Y speed to minus 20, which means jump up in the air. But while the crocodile is in the air, we can do something sneaky and set touch floor to false. What this means is every time the crocodile leaves the floor and jumps in the air, touch floor will automatically become false, at which point you're not allowed to jump anymore. And the only time that that touch floor attribute will go to true is when it hits the floor again. It's quite clever if you think about it. I'm going to rename this touching floor, it kind of tells me, and I'm going to move it down just to get it out of the way. Now, I'm sure you're wondering whether this works, so let's test it out. So here we have the crocodile moving left and right, and you can see the crocodile is jumping. Now I'm going to do this quite loudly so you can hear me in the background, so I'm going to press up as many times as I can. And you can see even though I'm hammering away on the up key, the crocodile only jumps once per jump. Now you, you notice it's quite a pathetic little jump, so what we'll do is we'll set the up to minus 40, and you can do minus 50 and minus 60 I suppose, and we'll test the game again, and this time the jump will look a little bit better. So what we have here is a character who jumps exactly the way a character should in a platform game, 